no group has been associated with a higher impact on mathematics than the ancient Greeks, from figures such as Thales, the first mathematician, to Euclid, the father of geometry. The Greeks have shaped the subject and our world, so let's find out what they actually did. We start around 624 BC, when Thales of Miletus was born. He's often recognised as the first mathematician in Western civilization. Instead of using religion or mythology, Thales tried to explain natural phenomena with a scientific approach. He discovered the aptly named Thales theorem, which is thought to be the first attributable mathematical discovery. This is a circle theorem and can allow you to create a right angle triangle with just a piece of string and a nail. Shortly after Thales, we come to the most famous figure on this journey, Pythagoras. Pythagoras is pretty much a household name, with everyone familiar with his theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This discovery, however, was seen in ancient Egyptian, Babylonian and Indian civilizations. So why is Pythagoras credited with it? Well, he founded a religion called Pythagoreanism, where he and his followers, amongst other things, worshipped mathematics. Through his following, it is likely his ideas gathered attraction and emphasis to extend beyond his lifetime. Unlike Thales, Pythagoras was concerned with the mysticism and divinity of numbers, in a belief called numerology. Travelling further forward in time, we arrive to one of the first paradoxes. Mathematicians are quite fascinated with paradoxes and the logical conundrum they raise. And the first of these were devised by Zeno of Elia. We now refer to these as Zeno's paradoxes, with an example such as the paradox of motion. Imagine you want to run a 100 metre race. You have to first run half the distance, which is 50 metres, but before doing that, you have to run a quarter of the distance, 25 metres. Before running a quarter, you have to run one eighth, and before one eighth, one sixteenth, and so on. This is an infinite number of tasks, and as such, you will never arrive to your destination. We now know this is not the case, and in fact, infinite series sums like this can converge to a number. Let's move to our first quick fire round. Democritus made huge scientific advances by establishing the formulation of atomic theory, and contributed to mathematics by finding the volume of a cone. Three figures laid the very foundation of Western philosophy, maths and science. Socrates was the founder of modern philosophy and influenced the practice of science to come. His student Plato was a polymath with writings and teachings in philosophy, science and maths, setting up the first Western higher education institute, the Academy of Athens. And Plato's student Aristotle, considered the father of modern philosophy, is the first known person to formally study logic, including its applications in science and mathematics. Around 300 BC, Euclid the father of geometry was born. His book The Elements introduced the aptly named Euclidean geometry and contained important proofs about geometry and number theory. This textbook was so influential it still appears in some form as a required reading in some universities over 2000 years later. And it influenced figures such as Newton and Einstein. Euclid taught mathematics in Alexandria, but not much else is known about his life. One of the greatest mathematicians of all time was born around 287 BC. This was Archimedes. He discovered the concept of calculus thousands of years before Newton and Leibniz, as well as works on geometry and mechanics. For the field of mathematics, he further developed a method of exhaustion, which laid the foundation for integral calculus, and using this he was able to find a great deal, such as the value of pi, which he determined to lay between 3.1408 and 3.1429. One of the greatest astronomers of antiquity, Hipparchus of Nicaea was also the father of trigonometry. He constructed and possessed what is believed to be the first trigonometric table. Using this he was reliably able to predict solar eclipses and other astronomical events. This also cemented him as the father of astronomy. He was the inventor of the astrolabe, and these were used to tell the time during day or night, to identify the time of sunrise and sunset, and to locate celestial objects in the sky. And later it was instrumental to seaborne navigation. Let's end with a final quickfire round. The sieve of Erastosthenes was developed around the 3rd century BC, by Rastosenes of Cyrene. This was the first efficient way to calculate prime numbers. Hero of Alexandria developed a method for calculating the area of any triangle. We now call this Hero's Theorem. Diophantine equations are an important area of research today, and these were developed by Diophantus around the 3rd century. In fact, while reading one of Diophantus's books, Pierre de Fermat proposed that one of these equations had no solution. This later became Fermat's last theorem a millennium problem that was only solved in 1994 and has the most unsuccessful proofs of any theorem in history. Finally, Hypatia was a prominent mathematician in Alexandria around the 4th century, writing commentaries on many books of her time and constructing tools such as astrolabes and hydrometers. She is regarded as the first female mathematician whose life and work is recorded. However, it was not just the Greeks that established mathematical foundations. Did you know, for much of Greek history, they did not have a well-defined concept of zero. So who actually discovered zero? Click the video to find out and subscribe for more maths history and science content. Thanks for watching.